You can easily burn more calories with this step-by-step workout I've got for you. Just take care that you don't make any of the mistakes I've listed here. Let's get you warmed up with 60 seconds of marching in place. This will help raise your heart rate without putting a ton of stress on your joints. It's also low-impact cardio that will get your body ready for our exercises today. Keep your elbows at an angle as if you're going for a run and start marching on the spot at a slow pace. This should not be much of a challenge for those of us former marching band members. Once you no longer find the marching a challenge, try 60 seconds of back kicks. They're a little more intense because you have to kick your feet up to your glutes, but you can burn up to 13 calories in 60 seconds depending on your body weight. Now, give me another 60 seconds of big arm circles. These will warm up your body and shoulders. We're also trying to get rid of the tension in your upper back. Just stand straight with your feet apart and raise your arms to the sides. First, rotate your arms forward and then backwards. Or, to give a bit of a kick to your glutes, the following week, switch to alternating lunges. They'll strengthen your core and prepare your body for a fat-burning workout. Now that you've worked up a bit of a sweat, let's sculpt your abs and slim down your waist with wall crunches. Place your legs up against a wall and put your hands behind your back for support. Lift your shoulders and squeeze your abs until you feel them stretching. Try to stay in position for 1-2 to two seconds. For better results, keep your shoulders relaxed and breathe out when you squeeze your abs during the crunch. The exact opposite of this exercise is the Superman. Here, we're going to strengthen your lower back and give you a stronger core. Most people make the mistake of neglecting their backs and just focus on their abs. To start out, get down on your stomach with your arms and legs stretched out. Lift one arm along with the opposite leg, lower them, then lift the other pair. Once you've mastered that, try keeping your feet down and raise both your hands. Then repeat with your feet. For the pros, you have to raise both your hands and legs. And after a month or so, start trying to stay in the position for 4 seconds. If your feet feel a little sore, try to do some stretches to loosen up your muscles. Let's make your abs stronger and your body more flexible with straight leg raises. If you're a newbie, just raise your legs in the air and place your hands either at your sides or underneath your glutes, whichever feels comfortable. Lower your legs halfway until you feel your abs stretching. Try breathing in as you lower your legs. Once you've mastered the first version, try bringing your legs down, but don't let them touch the ground. Remember to avoid putting pressure on your chest or lifting your shoulders off the floor. Many beginners also arch their backs, which can get you injured, so don't do that. (laughs) Remember, keep your back fixed on the floor. Reverse crunches We gotta get those six-packs showing, since the exercise targets the lower layers of your abs. Over time, it'll give you a flat belly and good back support. Lift your knees up and place your hands behind your ears to support your head like a ball. Then place your heels in front of your glutes. Lift your chest and pull it close to your thighs. Your heels should be in line with your hips. To take things up a notch, try doing the same exercise for 30 more seconds and with your knees bent at a 90-degree angle. Once you become a pro, try it with your knees at a 90-degree angle and your ankles crossed. Avoid putting your elbows close to your knees and lowering your chin. Time to relax with leg flutter kicks. This is a chill exercise in terms of intensity. It'll help you get a slimmer waist, but you need to keep your core engaged the entire time. Keep your back straight on the ground, extend your legs, and lift them off the ground. Start kicking your legs up and down for 30 seconds. Another way to do it is by moving your legs on top of each other back and forth like scissors. Now, many people lift their shoulders off the floor or arch their backs, which can cause injuries. Keep your legs straight, and once you get the hang of it, add 10 more seconds to your reps every week. The inchworm. This is a bodyweight exercise that will help strengthen your arms and chest. When you build up tolerance for the warm-up exercises I showed you at the beginning, 
add the inchworm to your warm-up routine. You have to bend down and touch the floor with your hands. Then, try to walk forward with your palms and without moving your legs. Reach as far as you can. Pause for 2-3 to three seconds and reverse the motion. You can now stand up or stay in the touching toes position. This will help strengthen your hamstrings. If you do the inchworm too quickly, it can be less effective and you might pull a muscle. Don't forget to engage your core throughout the exercise and avoid craning your neck forward. If you don't have enough space to walk forward, you can do the exercise on the spot. You can also make it harder by extending your plank position. Try flattening your body further and holding the position for 5 more seconds. Let's not forget about your arms with the tabletop reverse pike. Here, we're paying more attention to your shoulders, glutes, and legs. This makes it one of the best exercises we're doing today, since it gives you a full body workout in just a few seconds. Remember, the focus of your body weight should be on the edge of your palms. Bring your knees up, your shoulders back, and your torso into a tabletop position. Lower your glutes and repeat as many times as you like. A more difficult way to do this is place your legs further apart and curl your hamstrings using your heels. Bring your hips back down so that they're aligned with your hands. For the pros out there, try keeping your legs straight on the floor. Point your toes forward and roll your shoulders until you get to the tabletop position. When you come down, your legs should be straight. Take a small break, and let's finish with the up and down plank. This will strengthen your core and tone almost every main muscle group in your body. Since it's an advanced exercise, it also boosts weight loss. As a beginner, you should start with a normal plank exercise. But to get that high-intensity cardio, you have to follow through into the up and down plank, which is the more advanced version. Place your palms underneath your shoulders and go back down while alternating hands. Many people forget to put their hands underneath their shoulders and instead position them in front. Doing that makes the exercise less effective. Others will either opt for the wrong posture with their glutes higher from the start, or they'll lift their glutes as soon as they move their arms. Keep your back straight when you move up or down to do the exercise correctly. All right, you did well today! It's time to finish our session with some cool-down stretches. Try the child's pose for 30 seconds to stretch your muscles and relax. When you're stressed, you can try the same stretch to help calm yourself down. Then do an ab stretch for another 30 seconds to increase your flexibility and get rid of all the tension. Every day, try a new stretch, like the cat-cow stretch, the hamstring stretch, and the glute stretch. Hey, maybe there's something here to stretch your dollars further, but mm, that could be a stretch.